Hi, my name is Jason and I'm an application engineer here at 3M. Today we're going to try to answer some of the most frequently asked questions we get around polishing dark vehicles. So hopefully we can give you some little tips and tricks and show you some stuff that you can use out there in the field to make those jobs just a little bit easier. Before we get started, I just want to mention a couple of things. The first is make sure you're always wearing the proper PPE. Anytime we're sanding and polishing, we want to make sure we're wearing our nitrile gloves, safety glasses, ear protection, and then also a respirator. The other thing I want to mention is this video is intended for professional use. So for all of you technicians that are actually out there in the body shops. If you want any additional safety or warranty information, be sure to check the links in the description below. So at 3M, we get a lot of questions about polishing dark vehicles. The uh, best thing I can do is show you some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years and that my fellow application engineers have run into in the field. The biggest thing I want to stress is make sure you start with as clean of a panel as possible. Most of the issues I see is from a dirty buffing pad, a dirty microfiber cloth, maybe crust around the top of one of the compound or polish bottles that falls onto the panel and we go across the surface and we scratch what we just made absolutely perfect and it took us all day to do. So make sure you clean all that stuff off and you start with the cleanest environment possible. The next thing we'll talk about is on the sanding side. So with most repairs or remediation on the paint finishing side, typically what we do is we grab thousand or two thousand or fifteen hundred grit paper and we start sanding with the DA. Once we do that we move on to two or three thousand Trizac and from there we begin our compounding and polishing process. Anytime we're working with black vehicles I recommend sanding one extra step finer just to make sure any of those coarser grit scratches are fully gone before we move on to compounding. Nothing's more frustrating than when you get done with your full polishing step, you clean everything off, and you see one or two big swirl marks left in there, or DA marks from your paper, and now you have to start that whole process over again. So what I recommend, instead of starting with 1,000 grit, try to go no coarser than 1,200, and then 1,500, um, 2,000, and then we can jump into our finer papers like 3,000 Trizac, and then I would also recommend on a black vehicle, that straight black with no metallics, going one step further and trizacking the whole thing again with 5,000 grade. Um, again, this just ensures if we missed anything that hopefully this last sanding step picked that up and it's not gonna show up once we do our final clean of that vehicle. The other thing I wanna talk about is dirt nibs themselves. We don't wanna hand sand those just by folding a piece of paper over and trying to knock those nibs out. If it's a solid black vehicle, any little wave or wobble we're gonna see. So make sure you're always using some type of sanding pad or block, whether it's a firm block like this one, you can see how this is kind of harder to bend, but it still can conform a little bit. And then here we have one that bends quite a bit. So if we're anywhere near a body line or around a sharp curve, this is more of the sanding pad that we're gonna to wanna to use, or sanding block. Um, so when I take out nibs like that, I like to use a, a flexible abrasive. Um, you can go 1,000 grit, but again, I like to go as fine as possible. So if you have 12 or 1,500, I would usually start there. Make sure your pad and everything is really clean. And then you can go ahead and hand sand out your dirt nibs, just to make sure we're not leaving any high spots. Another good solution for that is using a razor blade or a nib file or even a Festool blade is a really great tool for that. Um, this tool, to make sure you use it the right way, there's a string that passes through the tool. Make sure that string is touching the panel. You don't want to put down any excessive pressure. We just lightly set that on and slide it across the panel and that'll cut any nib off nice and flat. From there, we can go to sanding and we won't be left with that little pimple kind of bump that we get if we try to hand sand out dirt nibs. So all of those are really good solutions and the flatter we can get a panel to start with or a dirt nib, the more successful we're gonna be at the end. 
So make sure you utilize all those tools that are available. If you don't wanna buy special sandpaper and special blocks um, to go with that paper, there are also blocks that work with normal DA paper. Um, they're semi-rigid, so it's kind of in between those two other blocks we saw before. The nice thing is those work right with your hook it paper. So those go right on. We can fold our paper over nice to make sure we don't have any wrinkles in it. And now we can hand sand with that. We can even use the edge of that to sand out dirt nibs in the panel without having to worry to group things up with our finger. So it's just a nice, clean block. We can use all the paper we already have if we don't have any of the other stuff available. Now that we've talked about sanding, we can move into the actual polishing itself. So a lot of shops out there are still using rotary type uh, buffing systems from compounding all the way through the polishing stage. These are really, really good for speed. The only downside with these is they tend to leave swirl marks. So make sure you're using good, clean pads. Again, make sure you're cleaning the tops of these bottles off so we don't get any dried stuff down inside that wool that leaves deeper scratches. And then the other thing to keep in mind is anytime we're working on a darker vehicle with a rotary type polishing system, is you're gonna have to add one extra step and it's typically using a blue foam pad, which is really, really soft, and then an ultra fine machine polish. That's gonna get rid of any of the swirl marks that may be left behind from using your foam pad and your regular machine polish on a dark vehicle. Once we go to clean that off, make sure you get dedicated cloths to use just with these products. Um, the reason being is, let's say we just polished and we used a regular yellow microfiber cloth, we got it mixed up with the other ones, now we went ahead and did our final swirl-free finish. If we grab the wrong cloth that has some of those dried specks in there, or maybe a little get, bit of compound in it, when we go to wipe our panel off, we could leave sand scratches, or cleaning scratches, straight line scratches in there from that cleaning process. And now we'll have to do this again. If they're bad enough, we may even have to go back to compound or regular polish. So be very, very mindful. I always recommend having dedicated blue microfiber cloths that touch nothing other than these products. When you're done with them, make sure you put everything in a Ziploc bag so it stays nice and sealed up and doesn't overly dry out. Because again, if we get any dry spots of polish left in here, that could leave a mark in our final job and we might have to redo some steps. What I recommend for dark vehicles is moving to a random orbital type system. If you don't have one of these in your shop, it's a good thing to get a demo on. Um, or reach out to us and we can give you more information on those products. The nice thing with a random orbital type system is it leaves a very, very high-end polish with virtually no swirl marks at all. The motion of this machine doesn't allow it to leave standard swirls, um, so it, it's much better on those darker vehicles. Just make sure you take your time with it. And the biggest tip when polishing, similar to the other side with a random orbital, is use very light pressure as you're finishing to make sure you're getting the full dual action motion of this tool. And then the last thing is make sure those pads are really, really, really clean. Um, if it's a black vehicle and you have brand new pads sitting on your shelf, that's the time to bust one of those out and use it instead of trying to reuse a pad that could be dirty or maybe you miss something while cleaning it. So I always recommend using a new pad if it's a high-end black vehicle that we wanna make sure has a swirl-free finish. The last piece of advice I have for you is use inspection spray with a black vehicle. If we're using white or silver, we can skip that step sometimes, is if we leave one little mark, it's not gonna be the end of the world, it'll probably still be invisible. But with a black vehicle, after each step, make sure you coat that panel with inspection spray and use a nice clean microfiber cloth to clean that off of there before you move on to the next step. Again, if we leave something, our polish is maybe filling a little swirl mark, and now we move on to our final step. Once we do our final cleaning, we might see we left one of those behind. And again, we have to go through that whole process all over again. So clean as much as possible. Make sure you're using clean pads. If you have new pads and it's a straight black vehicle, that's the time to switch those out. 
Don't sand dirt nibs by hand with no type of block. Make sure you're using some type of block, um, whether it's a soft block or firm block. And any of your nibs, be sure to fully flatten those out with either a razor blade, a nib file, or a fest tool blade. Again, that's going to give you the best opportunity for success. Um, this panel is very well polished already. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe this down with a pad that I've used for compounding. I'm also not going to fold it the right way, so this tag is going to be exposed and also this seam where normally I like to fold all of those in and bunch it up so I don't have any exposed tags or seams when I wipe down a panel. But if you leave a seam or a tag exposed and it's a dirty rag or something you've used on something else, if you're pushing hard when you clean that thing, everything might look fine. But then when we actually hit it with a sun gun, we see we've left all kinds of scratches in there. So again, all of this could have been avoided by using the right cloth, folding it up properly so none of those rough edges are exposed, and using light pressure to clean everything off. We don't want to push hard or take a used rag over the top because that's what can happen. So if this was our vehicle and we thought it was ready to go out the door, I gave it one final wipe down. I'm now going to have to go right back into polishing to take care of all the imperfections I just put in the panel. Um, so it's always good to give a final inspection with something like a sun gun or pull the vehicle outside in direct sunlight so you can really see and make sure you got everything out of it. So that's all the tips I have for you on darker vehicles. If you want to hear that information again or look at our SOPs around that stuff, be sure to check us out at 3M Collision Repair Academy. You can find information on almost every product and even print off the SOPs we have for rotary polishing systems, random orbital polishing systems, any of these final glazes or polishes, um, especially the ones we're gonna use on black vehicles. So hopefully this video helped you. Thanks again for watching it. If you found it useful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any additional questions, you can throw them in the comments section below. Again, check us out at 3M Collision Repair Academy if you want further information. And thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.